Good morning, students. We will continue with the remaining portion that is water harvesting. Okay, Be before we go on, to, as we all know, we have seen water. Water is very much recurrent. Yes or no? And how can we save it? Something like related with the water harvesting. How can we save it for the future? We are going to discuss about it in this topic. Watership management emphasizes scientific soil and water conservation in order to increase the biomass production. That means when we have a look on this watership management, it is a scientific way okay, of water as well as soil conservation so as to increase the biomass production and the aim of this water harvesting is to develop primary source of land and water to produce secondary resources of plant and animals for use in a manner which will not cause ecological imbalance. That means we need the aim of this water harvesting is to provide resources of land and water at the same time provide secondary resources to various kinds of plants and animals and in that meantime we need to create ecological balance there should be no disturbance that is the aim of the water harvesting okay when we have a look on this watershed management okay it it not it doesn't increase only the production or the income but also but also medicates drought and flood. That means they try to overcome this drought and flood because how? Okay, that means we are saving the water during the monsoon season and so that we can use it during the dry season. That is how we try to overcome drought and flood and increases the life of the downstream dam and receiver. Okay, when we have a look on uh, this continuation, various organizations are working on rejuvenating the ancient, ancient system of water harvesting in order to overcome this mega project like TAMS. Because if we start mega project that will hamper uh, the forest, the ecological resources, and it may lead to rehabilitation of various kinds of people that is the reason that's why they are giving importance on re rejuvenating ancient system of water harvesting and when we have a look on such community they have used hundreds of indigenous water saving methods to capture even the tech uh, of water that falls on the earth or on the land like uh, tuck small beat and leg put in place simple watershed system, build small earthen dams, construction types, uh, sand and limestone reservoir, um, etc. And this has been very, very beneficial because they recharge groundwater leveled and even brought river back to life. That means they give supply water to the river and thus they give life to the river. That means they recharge means uh, recharge means they go inside uh, inside the earth and they say it has been safe in that way. Okay. And that is referred to underground water level. And when we have a look on this water harvesting management, it has it is an all age concept. That means it has been practicing from far back during the ancient time. When we have a look on some people, it's mentioned out there. Please listen. There's sometimes they used to ask you for multiple choice. Katins, tangs, and natis is being practiced in Rajasthan. Bandharas and tals has been practiced in Maharashtra. Okay, uh, Panthesi in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, Athars and Pinus is practiced in Bihar, Kuls in Himachal Pradesh, okay, Bones in the Ghati belt of Jammu Kashmir or Jammu region and Iris, that is the tank in Tamil Nadu, Surang Kam, Kam in Kerala and Gatas in Karnataka. These are some of the ancient water reserved, water reserving management that's been practicing far back in the ancient India. And see, uh, if we give the privilege 
for the uh, for local people okay giving people control over their local water resources ensures that mismanagement and over exploitation of these resources is being reduced that means we need to give privilege to the people only to the local people so that mismanagement and over exploitation is being controlled to some extent Okay, when we have a look on uh, in a terrain region, like largely level terrain, then, uh, this water harvesting structure are main, mainly constructed in crescent shaped earthen impartments. Okay. Uh, what happens is this during the monsoon rain, okay, uh, they get filled up, or they get filled up, okay, uh, and uh, beyond the structure. Okay, only those uh, big structure can store water throughout the year. Okay, or mostly they get dry up after six months or seven months. Okay, after the monsoon gets over. But the main purpose of such kind of water harvesting structure is not only the whole water, not only the whole or surface water, but to recharge the underground water. Okay, the underground water, and that is the most important one. Okay, when we have a look on the advantages of ground water, it, they have we have got many things, and we usually go with on this uh, only this one. Okay, and what it happens is the advantages of ground water is that it does not evaporate. Okay, the second one is that if the underground water is being recharged, that means the uh, the well which is being dried, they get filled up. And what happens is this, the vegetation does not dry if the ground level water is uh, to maintain to some extent. And apart, apart from that, um, since the water is available only in the ground water level, uh, the, the doesn't provide space for the mosquito to breed. Okay, that is the one of the reasons. And this underground water is also relatively protected from contamination by various kinds of human activities and hum, uh, uh, human activities and animal waste. That is the main thing. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next one. That is coal and petroleum. These are the fossil fuels. Yes or no? In the previous chapter, uh, in the various topic, uh, we have already discussed about the conservation and management of resources like forest, wildlife and water. And we have come to a conclusion that if we go on with sustainable management, we can use it for the future. Next one, today which we are going to discuss is on coal and petroleum. This coal and petroleum are referred as fossil fuels and um, it has gained many uh, more importance after this industrial revolution because uh, we have been using uh, 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 using increasing amount of energy to meet our basic needs for the manufacture of various kinds of uh, goods uh, on which our life depends and this energy is usually uh, and this energy uh, are largely met by the reserve of coal and petroleum. The management which we have discussed in the previous, like uh, uh, conservation of forests and wildlife and water, all these things, are slightly different now which we are going to discuss now. We are going to discuss about coal and petroleum which are fossil fuels and these are formed from the degradation of biomass, um, biomass millions of years ago and hence this resource will get over. They will become exhaust in the future no matter how we care, yes or no? Because this fossil fuel takes millions of years to be formed. And the best option is to find some alternative means source of energy. Various estimates exist as to how long these resources will last if the present rate of usage, uh, usage continues. That means if we keep on using like this in the way that we are using now in an increasing way it has been estimated that our known petroleum resource will last us for about 40 years and the called resource will last for another just 200 years and after that it will be over and the option is alternative source of energy
Okay, when we have a look on this last paragraph, as we all know, coal and petroleum are being formed from biomass. Apart from this biomass, we find uh, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. When this are burnt, they produce carbon dioxide, oxides of water, oxide of nitrogen, and oxide of sulfur. And if this coal and petroleum are burnt in insufficient supply of oxygen, then carbon monoxide will be formed instead of carbon dioxide. Of this, product like oxide of sulfur and nitro, uh, nitrogen and carbon monoxide, and it is referred as poisonous gas. Yes, or if if it's this been consumed in high concentration, it may lead to the death of a person. And as we all know, when combustion of this uh, coal and petroleum takes place, carbon dioxide is being formed. Uh, another way of looking at coal and petroleum is that there are there are huge reserve of carbon and if all of this carbon is being converted to carbon dioxide you know yes or no if the carbon dioxide will keep on increasing in our atmosphere and if the carbon dioxide concentration is high they won't allow the sun ray they will trap the sun ray and it will lead to global warming we will feel very very hot and so we need to use all these natural resources especially coal and petroleum in a very judicious and careful manner that is the only thing when we have a look on this paragraph, okay, uh, some simple changes in our daily life can make a trusting change in our daily life. Let's have a look, okay? I'll just ask you some questions. It's up to your concept, whether you will take a past or use your personal vehicle or walk or cycle. That is your own options. If you are coming from the long, it's better to come from the past. Yes or not? Uh, we can save our vehicle. Okay, or else if you are staying nearby, you can come walking. Next is using pulp or inflorescence pulp in your home. Okay, when we use the ordinary pulp, okay, it consumes more than 40 watt. Yes or no? When we have a look on this fluorescent tube, it will that they can consume very less amount of energy. Next is using the lift or taking the stairs. It's up to you. It's a kind of exercise only. It's better to take the lift because when uh, it's better to take the uh, stair rather than this lift because when we use the lift, it uh, it wastes lot large amount of energy and so it's better to take the stair and take it as an exercise. Next, the fourth one, wearing an extra sweater or using a heater device on on cold days that means it's better to use extra sweaters because when we use various kinds of heating device it consumes lots of energy these are the slight changes which we can implement in our day life okay when we have a look on this last slide the management of coal and petroleum okay is also dependent on the efficiency of the engine and we use this column petroleum usually in, in internal compartments for transportation and for various kinds of research work yes or no and so we should use uh, it should ensure the complete compartment then only we can uh, in order to increase their efficiency we need to use it to the maximum uh, but without creating pollution because if it's not burned properly if there's no proper compartment that means it will create carbon monoxide, yes or no? And so it's better to use the, uh, um, in an efficient way. That means the engine has to be uh, efficiency, efficient, efficient, and this will reduce our air pollution. Okay, on conclusion, Okay, have a look on 16.5 and overview of natural resource management. Sustainable management is very, very difficult job. Yes, and it's a very, very difficult tax. Okay. When we take decisions or issuing an, uh, or addressing issue, we need to keep our mindset open with regard to the interest of various kinds of stockholders. We have already studied, uh, we have four type of stockholders, yes or no? We need to consider everyone. Okay, no one should be excluded when we take a decision or manage some issues.
And as we all know, human by nature is very selfish and we will think about only our convenience. Yes or no? And so it's mentioned out there. We need to accept the people that people will act with their own best interests as the priority. But the realization of such a selfish goal will lead to the uh, misery for a large number of people and total destruction of our environment in slowly growing. That means if we go on with a selfish nature, okay, if we think only about ourselves, okay, uh, later on, it will hamper and it will cause destruction to our environment, creating various kinds of pollution. If we go beyond the rules, laws and regulations, we need to tailor our requirement. We need to cut or we need to try to reduce. Okay. We need uh, our requirement individually and collectively so that the benefit of development reach everyone now and for all generations to come. That means we need to change ourselves first. We need to try our change. We need to bring changes in ourselves first and only we can bring changes to the society. Yes or no? And after that, we can use the resources judiciously and so we can save it for the future generation. This complete your chapter. Thank you.